Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay. Welcome to our last summer schedule worship service. So I'm going to be telling you that 10 times during the service so you remember next week. But thank you for being a part of our summer schedule. It's been delightful to have a, a much more full sanctuary uh, for the sanctuary service than we had last summer. I want to invite you to stand and to sing with me. It's a song we learned two weeks ago called Step by Step, and it'll be up on the screen as well as in your bulletin. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you. join me in prayer. God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the many Sundays we've spent together this summer. We pray that you will bless us as we step into the fall schedule next week. God, we simply ask that all that we say and do today might bring honor and glory only to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand and join in the call to worship. I will thank you, Lord, with all my heart. I will talk to you all your wonderful acts. I will celebrate and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, Most High. The Lord rules forever. The Lord rules for the sake of justice. The Lord is a safe place for the oppressed, a safe place in difficult times. Those who know your name trust you, O God, because you have not abandoned any who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who lives among us. Proclaim God's mighty acts among all people.
Please be seated and join me in the opening prayer. God of this new day, we praise you with joy. When we were weary in body and mind, you refresh us with your spirit. When our lives are broken and touched by despair, you heal us with your love and inspire us with the hope you offer to all people. God, help us to embrace your refreshing, healing, hopeful spirit today so that we will be strengthened for our journeys of life and faith. Amen. For our prayers today, first, a great celebration. One of our members, Carmen Palmer, had a great granddaughter that was born this week. Her name is Ember Carol, and not Amber, Ember. And her grandfather is a firefighter who happens to be fighting the fire in Idaho at the same time that she was born. So I thought that was a very clever name um, and an honor to her grandpa. Doris Hall asked us to keep her daughter Lee Nielsen in her prayers as Lee has some health problems. And this was definitely um, United Methodist Surgery Week. Um, we have Tom Linneber and Leslie Swanson, Dale McCormick and Shannon Arnold all recovering from surgeries they had this past week. Joyce DeGraff um, gets to go home from the nursing home to her own house and Jean Moland, Brenda Moland's mother, also gets to go to the nursing home out of the hospital. The flowers that you see up here, they're gorgeous. Um, they are left here by the Christensen family. Bernice Christensen's memorial service was here yesterday, and they were gracious enough to leave us with these beautiful flowers to celebrate Bernice's life today with us as well. On this Labor Day, we're asked to pray for those who are seeking work, those who are in difficult positions in their jobs, those who are not able to make ends meet for their families. Um, it's always been a, a stance of United Methodists to advocate for people being paid a living wage. So um, as you see that in the news, you can realize that that's a part of our social principles as well. But with, with Labor Day, I think it brings home very hard for those who are looking for work. So please keep them in your prayers. So those are the new prayers this week to offer with you, and I know that you bring your own. So would you sing with me, Seek Ye First, as our call to prayer, and then we'll spend time in silent prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Eternal God, we thank you for these few moments when we can be pulled out of ourselves and into your realm. Today, God, we lift up all of those who are in need of healing, be it healing of body or mind or spirit. We pray especially for those facing surgery or recovering from it, for those living with chronic illness that makes each moment a challenge. God, we pray that you will be their strength. We pray also, Lord, for all, all who are seeking this day, those who are searching for a new direction for their lives, 
those who are looking for work, those who are seeking connection and relationship. We pray that you will open doors and guide their steps, that they may find what you are truly offering to them, new life and new hope. God, we pray for our church as we wind down the summer and prepare for the fall. We ask you to bless all of the teachers and volunteers, all of the music directors, all of those who make ministry happen. And God, we ask that you remind us that you have blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. May the love we receive from you go far out from these four walls, that all people might come to know of your care. God, we pray today for our nation, for President Obama and our elected leaders as they make a very difficult decision in world politics. God, we pray that you will be their wisdom and their guidance. We pray for the protection of innocence and especially protection of children. May the way open that our world situation can be resolved in peace. God, we offer these prayers and the prayers of our own hearts in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And I invite you to join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this quiet place with you, I bow before your throne. I bear the deepest part of me to you and you alone. I keep no secrets, for there is no thought you have not known. I bring my best in all the rest to you and lay them down. With all my heart, I want to love you, Lord, and live my life each day to know you more. All that is in me is yours completely. I'll serve you only with all my heart. You faithfully supply my needs according to your plan. So help me, Lord, to seek your face before I seek your hand. And trust you know what's best for me when I don't understand. Then follow in obedience in every circumstance with all my heart I want to love you Lord and live my life each day to know you more all that is in me is yours completely I'll serve you only with all my heart all that is in me is yours completely I'll 
Today's scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house. It didn't fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. But everybody who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like a fool who built a house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against that house. It fell and was completely destroyed. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were amazed by his teaching, because he was teaching them like someone with authority and not like their legal experts. Would you pray with me and for me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O God. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It occurred to me this week as I watched my dog, and some of you have met my dog, Abby. She hangs out with us in the church office on a regular basis. In fact, if I come and Abby's not with me, I don't hear my staff saying, Hi, Jean. I hear them saying, Where's Abby? (laughs) But I watched her with someone who needed some comfort this week that came to my office, and I watched as she went up and just kind of leaned against that person's legs um, and gave her love, I realized that oftentimes my dog is a better Christian than I am. When you think about it, she has gratitude. She appreciates every single moment in life, every bit of love and attention and food, definitely food. She is non-complaining. In fact, she celebrates every day. She gets up, I give her the same food. She thinks it's the best thing. We go on the same morning walk. Best thing for her. Taking a nap under my desk, it's the best thing. She celebrates whatever she's doing. She also shows unconditional love for others. As we go for walks, it doesn't matter who we meet. Um, She wants to sniff and greet them, both dogs and people. Um, She'll make beeline for somebody's ankles to see what they smell like. Street person, society matron, doesn't matter to Abby. It's somebody new, and that's the best. And she is very forgiving. She never holds a grudge, even when I leave her alone for hours on end. As soon as I walk back in, she forgives me. She jumps up and down, is all excited. My dog looks at me the way that I know I should be looking at God every day, worshiping, adoring, and loving. We have officially on this last summer Sunday reached the end of our series on the Sermon on the Mount. It has taken us all summer to get through three chapters in Matthew, and there is a reason for that. It's because all All of the familiar teachings are there, and all of the really meaty and challenging teachings come in this section, the Sermon on the Mount. Today, Jesus is talking about building houses, and like Pat told the kids, it's not really about building houses, it's about building our lives. But if you build a house on sand, you know it's not going to work. The foundation's going to shift and crack, and water gets inside, and it's gone. Foundation on bedrock is solid, no cracks, watertight. And that house stands for a very long time, unshaken even by the forces of nature. And of course, Jesus isn't really talking about building houses. You are the house. I am the house. My life is the house that Jesus is talking about building your life is what Jesus is talking about building. Upon what are you going to build your life? Jesus says, if you build your life on my teachings, you will be able to withstand anything that life can possibly bring. Jesus also says, if you decide not to build your life on my teachings, 
you'll never be able to withstand the challenges of life. It seems like a simple choice. Sand or bedrock, I'll take the bedrock. I think I'll build my life on Jesus' teachings so that I can stand strong no matter what life might send my way. It's a simple choice, except have you been paying attention this summer to what Jesus' teachings actually are? Can we really build our lives by living them out? There's that one about letting go of our treasure here on earth so that we can have treasure in heaven. How about the one about turning the other cheek, refusing to return abuse for abuse? Or the one about doing all your good deeds quietly, without thanks or praise or attention from others? How about the the one about not worrying, not worrying about food or clothing or anything? Then there's the one about being constantly asking and seeking and knocking on the door to know more about God. And the one about following the narrow path, taking the hard way instead of the easy way out. There's that teaching that said we shouldn't be angry with others indefinitely because that's as bad as killing them. Or the one that says we shouldn't fantasize about men or women that we're not married to, that it's as bad as sleeping with them while you're married to another. And then there's the one that says never return evil for evil or hurt for hurt or insult for insult. Offer love, no matter how the other person treats you. Now, we heard a lot about that last one this week as we commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights March on Washington. That radical teaching of returning love, no matter what someone deals out to you, that radical teaching of Jesus was the whole key to Martin Luther King Jr.'s teaching and training for protesters and freedom riders and marchers. Return no one evil for evil. Do not lash out in anger. Take the abuse and meet it with the strength of love. Love that understands your attacker's ignorance. Love that gives you the strength to sit there and take it. Love that eventually will win our rights to be treated with dignity. Can you do that? Can you pray for your enemies and bless those who persecute you? It's in there, in the Sermon on the Mount. Can you build your life on that? How about treat others the way you want to be treated, the golden rule? Two weeks ago, I asked you to be intentional for a solid week about living the golden rule in all parts of your life. So how did that go? Were you like me and somewhere around Wednesday you started to forget that you were supposed to be doing it? Was there some big situation that you came across that made it really hard to follow that particular golden rule teaching? Some of you have told me stories about that week. First off, before we even left here, I heard comments like, that's really a challenge, what you're asking us to do. Yeah. That's demanding and difficult. Yes. I don't think I can sustain it for a whole week. Well, how about sustaining it for a lifetime? Are you building your life on sand or on the bedrock of Jesus' teachings? One story I was told about that golden rule week was about a driver who pulled up at an intersection and seeing a man in worn clothing um, holding a sign claiming to be a veteran down on his luck asking for money or food. This trying to live by the golden rule driver at first ignored the man, as most of us probably do. Then he glanced over and happened to catch the guy's eye. And he saw their hurt and hopelessness and embarrassment. 
The driver turned the corner and found a parking place, walked back and talked with the man on the corner. He learned that what the man mo needed most was milk and juice for his children. Together they went to the 7-Eleven on the opposite corner and the driver let the man select what his family needed. A gallon of milk, a half gallon of juice, a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, and a carton of eggs. The whole thing totaled less than $20, but the man thanked the driver profusely, telling him that now he could get out of the heat and go home early knowing he could feed his kids for a couple of days. The man declined the offer of a ride. He lived just down the block and around the corner, he said. Turns out he was a neighbor to the driver, just a few houses down. Never before had that driver considered that people desperate for help lived quite so close by. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Actually changed a family's life for a couple of days that particular week. Others of you have told me about changing the way you um, treat your annoying coworker um, because of the golden rule challenge, or about giving the checkout clerk back the money that she accidentally gave you in change. Some of you talked about taking the time to listen to your elderly parents or neighbors tell their stories and discovering that there are a lot of things you don't actually know about your parents' lives. One of you gave up time on the golf course to help your neighbors paint their house. One of you, a young one of you, shared your lunch when it was clear that the student next to you had forgotten to bring theirs. One of you stopped and captured a puppy that was running around in the traffic because you most certainly hoped that if it had been your dog, someone would have rescued him. Clearly, many of you took that golden rule challenge week seriously, but here's the catch. I challenged you to do it for a week. Jesus challenges us for a lifetime to make the golden rule our way of life every single day, week, month, and year of our lives. Can we do that? Really? It has been very interesting this summer to look together at some of the things that Jesus taught and to realize just how extreme and radical they were for his time. The thing is, they are extreme and radical for our time as well. Being a Christian, following Jesus, living, living by his teachings, asking God to shape and mold our lives until we become the very image of Jesus, that's about as radical an idea as anyone ever had. Hundreds, thousands, millions of people have tried it, some with more success than others. Hundreds, thousands, millions more people have gone through the motions, attending worship, paying pledges, supporting the church as an organization, without ever really accepting this radical challenge of actually living what Jesus taught. The radical Jesus has been our theme. So what's next? What's next is for each of us to decide whether we have it in us to really and truly follow the way of Christ? Do we have it in us? And are we really and truly ready to try? It's not something that can be done easily, and it's certainly not something that can be done alone. We need support. We need to bounce ideas off of other people. We need to study scripture together so that we have a better idea of what exactly Jesus taught and how he related to people. We need to be able to admit to someone when we fall short of living the Jesus life. And we need to be able to celebrate with people as we grow in faith, as we get better at this Jesus challenge. In your bulletin, like I said during the announcements, there are numerous opportunities for doing this together. 
A Sunday school class can be a great support for walking the path of Christ. A weekday group, a music group, the knitting group. You'd be amazed what those people talk about while they're knitting and crocheting. A youth group, kids' classes. Find your people. Find your people and your support for really doing this golden rule Jesus challenge thing. If you've never really taken the teachings of Jesus seriously, now is your chance. The way of Christ is life-changing. It's life-changing for us as individuals, and it is life-changing for the world. And we are invited to be a part of it. But let's be clear, this is not for sissies. We're stepping out to follow one of history's most radical and most personally challenging teachers, Jesus Christ. Let's step out together on this. And if you're wondering what all this radical fuss is about, if you're new among us, or if you're away for part or all of the summer, then pick up a Bible or go online and read the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7. Read it as if they were really, truly instructions for living our lives. And prepare to be challenged to your very core. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who will come. All who come seeking to live in love with God and love with neighbor are welcome at our Lord's table. Would you pray with me? Do we have this? Do we have the communion prayer up? Up oh, there it goes. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyous thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. Holy are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his life and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and gave thanks to you, God, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you, O God, passed it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves today in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
For communion today, you're invited to come forward and take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup. If you need to um, be gluten-free, it's here on the, on the railing. You're welcome to spend time in prayer at the railing or to return to your seats. Uh, may this be a holy time for each one of us. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Celebrate the life God has given us and to love and serve God in everything we do. Mm -hmm.